Good morning. It's March 22nd, and we extend a warm welcome to you here at the Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia. My name is Margie. I'm one of the lay readers. Let us gather ourselves in stillness as we come into God's presence. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us worship. O oh, God, make speed to save us. O oh, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, world without end. Amen. The first reading is taken from Jeremiah, chapter 24, reading verses 1 through 10. After Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the officials, the skilled workers and the artisans of Judah were carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The Lord showed me two baskets of figs placed in the front of the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs, like those that ripen early. The other basket had very bad figs, so bad they could not be eaten. Then the Lord asked me, what do you see, Jeremiah? Figs, I answered. The good ones are very good, but the bad ones are so bad they cannot be eaten. Then the word of the Lord came to me. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Like these good figs, I regard as good the exiles from Judah, whom I sent away from this place to the land of the Babylonians. My eyes will watch over them for their good, and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them a heart to know me, that I am their Lord. They will be my people, and I will be their God, for they will return to me with all their heart. But like the bad figs, which are so bad they cannot be eaten, says the Lord, so will I deal with Jedekiah, king of Judah, his officials and the survivors from Jerusalem. Whether they remain in this land or live in Egypt, I will make them abhorrent and an offense to all the kingdoms of the earth, a reproach and a byword, a curse and an object of ridicule, whether I banish them. I will send the sword, famine and plague against them until they are destroyed from the land I give to them and to their ancestors. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm will be the Jubilata. You can find that on page 49 of your BAS. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Today we remember Thomas Ken, Bishop of Bath and Wells. He was born in, um, in July of 1637 and died on March the 19th in 1711. He was an English cleric, considered the most eminent of the English non-juring bishops and one of the fathers of modern English hymnody. He was born in 1637 in a town called Little Berkhamstead in Hertfordshire. In 1652, Ken entered Winchester College and in 1656 became a student of Hart Hall in Oxford. He graduated with a BA and an MA in 1664. He was ordained in 1962 
and after taking holy orders, he became chaplain to Bishop Morley in 1665 in Winchester. In 1674, Ken paid a visit to Rome with his nephew, young Isaac Walton, and that resulted in the confirming of his regard for the Anglican communion. He was one of the seven bishops who opposed James II's Declaration of Indulgence. He was sent to the Tower of London and tried by Judge Jeffreys, but acquitted because of public opinion. In 1688, the non-juring bishops refused to swear an oath of allegiance, allegiance to William and Mary while James II was still alive. Ken was only 52 when he was deposed from Bath and Wells. In 1691, his public life had ended. He spent the last 20 years of his life with his friend Lord Weymouth at his house in Longleat. Known for refusing to give accommodation to Nell Gwynne, the favorite mistress to King Charles II, when he started building his great house in 1683 to emulate Versailles. The king was frequently in Winchester and wanted her close, but Ken refused and said that it went against his conscience. He was a poet, a hymn writer, and a musician, and two of his most famous hymns are Awake My Soul and With the Sun, and glory to thee, my God, this night. He is buried at the church of St. John the Baptist and the frame where his crypt can still be seen. The creed is found on page 52. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thanks be to thee, O Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits thou hast given us, for all the pain and insults thou hast borne for us. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May we know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, now and forevermore. The Collect for today. Almighty God, you gave to your servant Thomas Ken grace and courage to bear witness to the truth before rulers and kings. Give us strength also that following his example, we may constantly defend what is right, boldly reprove what is evil, and patiently suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer on page 54. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>